What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today we are opening up one of my favorite sets, 7th edition. Uh, this is the set that I got into Magic on, so I always love opening up packs of 7th. Uh, as far as value goes, we really only have one card that's sitting just way above the fold. At $55 we have Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, but below that we do have Birds of Paradise, Lord of Atlantis, uh, Meek Stone, Coat of Arms, Wrath of God, Worship. We've got tons of awesome stuff. Uh, lots of just random value it looks like in this set, so we'll, we'll do the best we can to hopefully pull something exciting. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if it is a limited environment, so we'll figure out what our pack one pick one would be, or at least do the best that we can to figure out what the pack one pick one would be. Uh, I am not the best drafter, so I can't promise that I will get this correct, uh, but we'll see what we can do. So, our first card, Disenchant, one in a white uh, for an instant, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Perfect sideboard card, always something you'd like to have in your sideboard, especially if you're white, because... Uh, if a deck plays some heavy hitter artifact or some heavy hitter enchantment, you want to be able to deal with it. Though it's not necessarily a main deckable card, only because artifacts and enchantments are not the big theme of this set. It's not like you're going to run into them every single game. Uh, shock, great. Instant, one red, uh, deal two damage to any target, either creature or player. Uh, this card is fantastic, obviously something that you want, it's removal, it's burn, uh, it does basically anything that a great burn spell should. So, uh, I really do like this card, I definitely like it over Disenchant for sure. Uh, Telepathic Spies, a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a blue, when it comes into play, look at target opponent's hand. Uh, this is okay, it's not great, uh, it's fine only because you're gaining that information and that's always good. But uh, you really don't do it. There's no follow-up, right? You just have to then play around that uh, instead of actually either taking a card from it or doing something a little bit more exciting. It, it just looks at their hand. Uh, it's fine. It's not amazing, though. Definitely would take shock over it. Uh, Spined Worm, a 5-4 uh, for 4 and a green vanilla creature. Uh, definitely a great beater. Uh, perfectly fine uh, in the big green decks. Uh, we do have... Obviously, Birds of Paradise, and I believe we've got a few elves in here to kind of ramp into this, uh, which is perfectly fine. I think I'd rather have Shock, to be honest. Uh, that might be incorrect, but I do really like Shock, so uh, a little bias there. Uh, How from Beyond, X and a black for an instant target creature gets plus X plus zero uh, until end of turn. This is a scalable combat trick. Uh, I want to point out how that actually is pretty important. Um, most combat tricks obviously have a lot of relevance in the early game and some relevance in the late game depending on where the board state is. This always really has relevance because you're always going to be able to use it hopefully as sort of a removal spell. Uh, you obviously tap as many lands as you need to to make sure that your creature can kill whatever creature is coming the other way or you can have it deal the last few points of damage uh, by scaling it depending on how much life your opponent has. So. This is actually not bad. I really like this card. Uh, I think I still like Shock more, but I do like it quite a lot. Uh, Circle of Protection Green. One and a white for an enchantment. Uh, pay one, and the next time a green source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. Uh, this was part of an entire cycle. We've got one for each color, uh, and they're fine. They're not amazing. They're definitely great sideboard options, uh, if, especially if the opponent's playing sort of an aggressive deck. Uh, it's really good to have something like this, just to be able to kind of stem the bleeding a little bit. Uh, again, sideboard though, probably not uh, first pickable. Stone Rain, Sorcery for two and a red, Destroy Target Land. Pretty straightforward card, a very classic card in fact. Uh, I love the artwork on this one as well. Um, and not great, unfortunately, in uh, Limited specifically. It's, there's decks around land destruction and they are perfectly fine uh, in Constructed. However, in Limited, most people are just going to be running a bunch of basics, so stone raining them doesn't really do that much. Uh, so, not that excited about that card, unfortunately. Uh, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, a vanilla 1-1 one, one for 1 blue. This card is bad. Uh, there's not really a good reason to play this, unless for some reason uh, you had a Lord of Atlantis or some other Merfolk Lord that made this maybe even a little bit better. But at that point, you're still depending on another card to make this card good. Uh, and I don't like that. I really hate this card, unfortunately. Uh, Wild Growth. Enchant land for one green. Whenever the uh, enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds one green to his or her mana pool. This is a great card for just a green ramp deck. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Uh, most of the time, they're not going to be blowing up your lands or stone raining or anything like that. So 
Uh, you can kind of get away with enchanting your lands a little bit easier than you can enchanting creatures. Uh, and this does just ramp you, uh, especially even just on turn one. So I really like this card. I think it's perfectly fine. Not better than Shock in my opinion, uh, but still fantastic. Uh, Unholy Strength, this artwork is hilarious. Uh, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus one uh, for one black. I don't really like this card. Uh, classic Enchanted Creature uh, effect I'm not a fan of. Uh, and it really is just a pump spell at the end of the day. Uh, they can just remove it or do something like that. And then you have a two for one on your end, which is not good. So uh, not a fan of that card. Uh, Knighthood, two and a white for an enchantment. Creatures you control have first strike. Uh, I think this is a powerful card, but probably not great for limited. It just seems a bit slow. Uh, on turn three, I'd rather play a creature than play an enchantment. Uh, late game, I feel like that's fine to play in the enchantment, but uh, at that point, hopefully you've kind of already taken over a little bit. So I, while this card is hugely, hugely powerful, I don't think that I'd want that. Uh, Fire Elemental, three and two red for a five, four vanilla creature. This is similar to the Spined Worm, except Spined Worm is easier to cast. Uh, I don't think that this is a bad card by any means. I would probably play it in just any red deck, uh, but it's not that exciting. Uh, honestly, if you're going to go big creatures, I'd rather go green. Uh, so, if, eh, not that excited. Uh, telepathy, one blue for an enchantment. Your opponents uh, play with their hands revealed. That's a very interesting enchantment. Um, I think... Honestly, I don't know if this is good and limited. Uh, I might be wrong in saying that this isn't great, uh, but it's a turn one play, so I, I kind of want to lean towards it's worth it. Uh, I'm going to put it here. We, of course, have our land, and then we have our rare uh, Dregs of Sorrow. X, four, and a black. Destroy X target non-black creatures and draw X cards. That is a powerful, powerful card. I feel like it's very late game, uh, obviously, but it does refuel you. That might actually just be the pick. Uh, I think I'd probably pick that uh, just because it destroys not only one creature but as many as you can actually scale it to uh, but it also draws you X cards and there's no drawback other than it being an expensive card and in black you expect if there's card draw to have a drawback so uh, I think Dregs of Sorrow would be what I'd like uh, to pick. Telepathy is an interesting card though I would definitely say that uh, that might have some relevance correct me in the comment section obviously because it might be wrong but kind of dig that card. So if you enjoyed this episode of the Crackback series, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, and as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crackback episode.